Okay. So as the thumbnail suggests, we are running late. Let's see if we can hopefully get that sign in there somewhere. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, sorry, I was cooking food and then I suddenly realized that I had... Oh, I left the stove on! I actually had left the stove on. So I had to was a burning mess. And I was like, it was a dog mess. <laughs> cleaning up dog shite. I'm not going to leave you all in um, trying to guess what this noise is. We're talking dog around line. Ah! Oh, 
unfortunate human beings that have one limb are walking on one limb because of a landmine. They all agree with me that the worst landmine is definitely a doggy landmine. Getting your leg blown off is not nearly as unpleasant as stepping into a pool. And even though you might not be able to see it from the angle of the camera, it's a bit distracting staring at a turd when you're trying to teach a fitness class. And I know you are all staring at a turd in that who I am as a person. <laughs> oh, Ian, you are witty. Very witty, witty man. Okay, um, I think we can get this into a decent angle now. Uh, I'm sure the thumbnail tells enough anyway. So uh, we are going to get started in 15 of your Earth minutes. That's on camera. That's on camera. You're being taken to court. Where I'm judge, jury, and executioner. And when the can is not looking, the beating you will receive. They're here in the end. Thank <laughs> you. 
quite like the fact that I live near a uh, near a school. It's just the right distance away where the sound of the kids playing is like relaxing. Reminds me of loads of um, loads of songs that kind of have that kids playing in the background. MGMT have one kids. Then um, another brick in the wall. Loads. I'm never giving you a coffee. I don't want to see what that ends up with in the house. So I haven't started the um. The video. Oh, actually, that angle is great. I haven't started the video. The video. And no wonder it shits on a pillow. Making the laptop comfortable, you know? Uh, yeah, that'll do fine. So, yeah, I haven't started the, uh, the camera, uh, my phone camera, which, you know, goes up non live. And that'll start up in 10 minutes, just in case anyone was in and saw something and was like, okay, I'll be back in time. I was inconsistent with my time, but at least I'll be consistent with my promise of when the class would restart. But uh, I think that I'm going to, I know I've already moved, I've made another channel for the video games, but I think I'm gonna move all these fitness classes because they're very specific. They are, um, and because they're gonna be doing so often, they're going to build up the channel, which means that certain um, videos that, uh, that are more specific and more unique are going to be sort of, they're gonna slip through the cracks. And because the these are so specific, they're only gonna be viewed by people who want to do fitness classes. I mean, like, you know, there's loads of things out there on YouTube that people will stick on so they can uh, have it on in the background and they don't necessarily look at it or things that put people to sleep. There's um, a thing called AMSA, ASMR. Uh, I'm a big, uh, I'm very well into it myself. And I listen to some guy who, uh, who has this really deep, breathy, French voice, and he does. He just tells a uh, uh, history. He just says things about history, and it's a great little thing I find to just um, take your mind off whatever is, whatever thoughts are running through your head and tend to keep you from settling down and falling asleep. And yeah, so people use videos on YouTube for all sorts of things, but um, fitness class, I can't see anyone using it for any other reason other than they want to do a fitness class. It'd be terribly boring, in my opinion, to watch a fitness class if you weren't actually uh, doing it yourself. If you wanted to learn something about exercises, that's different to a fitness class because people can usually get to the point a lot quicker, whereas what I'm trying to do is do the fitness class with you like it was instructional, you know, person to person and sort of go through the turmoil of the whole thing as um what's the what's the phrase as a ah oh, it's left me the moment i stop filming the camera it'll come back I know exactly where I can find the phrase as well because the um, when Hendrix died, not Jimmy, my dog, the the goldfish died at the same time, and uh, I text my brother saying, "Oh, the fucking solidarity! That's it! I knew it would come back if I did that. I knew it would come back if I sort of worked around it and worked backwards." Yeah, so I text Jack saying, "Oh, fuck's sake! The the <laughs> the fish has died as well." And uh, Jack wrote back to me um, saying, "Must have been a uh, must have. He must have killed himself in solidarity of the dog dying." And I can't remember what my point of solidarity was, but it's on camera, so you can backtrack. Oh yeah, the class. 
and I'm going through the the arduous experience of working out, and uh, then I'm doing it with you as a show of solidarity. And I don't want to do any of these classes, by the way. I'm just I don't think I'm pushing that enough. These classes are for you, the viewer, because I I do my running. This is this doesn't aid the running. It's not like um cross training where you're uh, you're working out something else. There is cross training that is involved in uh, doing marathons and that sort of thing, but it is not twice a day. It's not ten times a week. The stretching, yes, okay, that one is uh, is definitely useful. The stretching will always be done on the alternative time of um, whatever time uh, the fitness thing is. So if the fitness thing is on at twelve, six o'clock will be the stretching time, and if the stretching is on at twelve. The fitness thing will be on at six. Now, um, in previous ones, I've mentioned that I can, um, bad example setting it today, seeing as how it was late, but I'm pretty certain that I can keep the 12 o'clock one fairly stable. Um, the six o'clock one, because I don't run first thing in the morning, I usually run straight after this class because I'm warmed up. Um, but in the evening, I might be just too knackered to do it. Like uh, Monday, Monday was, I, I think I skipped Monday. Uh, I think I skipped Friday because of the France match. But um, there's little things that can just get in the way in the evening. But usually noon, I can commit to that one. And every, I think, three of the noonday um, classes are stretching ones. Because... Uh, especially with running, you wear out your body quite a lot when you go running. It's that's why people talk about injuries, also to it, um, what sort of footwear you use. But there's a debate about that. I'm a hardliner for the um, no heel, no um, no elevated heel when you go running because we became the dominant life on earth. There's a strong belief, strong theory that we became the dominant life force life force life on earth the um top of the food chain not necessarily because we were highly intelligent but because we are the best at something we are physically the best at something not mentally the best at something physically which you wouldn't think but it's 100 percent true we are the best athletes or the best animals for endurance nothing outpaces us if you increase the distance and that's how we became good at hunting down game it was just because we ran them until they collapsed dead. Um, I don't even. I think at some point we weren't even using like weapons to kill them. I think it was literally we were running them down, and the animals just like saw us and thought, "Oh, something's running at us! Run away!" And they didn't know. Like once we got to them, they'd be like, "How are we gonna kill a bison? We're gonna punch it!" And we just ran them into exhaustion, and then they collapsed on the ground out of fear. And did all that. Look up Born to Run. Fascinating book. Absolutely fascinating. Goes into all sorts of really interesting stuff. I can't remember what the bone is called, but there's a little bone in the back of our heads as well. That means that when we go running, you can maintain really strong eye contact, which is, again, perfect for when you're chasing something down over a long period of time. Whereas if you look at pig, the way a pig will... Um, its head will bop from side to side. It'll be really jarring. Whereas, you know, we can run and we can fire a gun, like, relatively accurate. So not a lot of animals can do that. And then you get into our Achilles tendon, and the Achilles tendon is also a rare thing. You see it in kangaroos. And that's how you're supposed to run. You're supposed to use your... Oh, that might be the door. And we're almost at half, so we'll get started now after this thing. Twasn't. Twasn't. Whoop. Any spare time to get started, is it, anyway? Coming up to the half twelve now. Um. Oh, fuck you, gravity. 
think you're all that in a bag of chips. Okay. Uh, let's get the angle right again on the live. Yeah, that will that will do nicely. All right. Um, so for the people who are watching live, I'm just going to repeat myself a little bit. So as uh, if you're watching this on the non live part, uh, I'm actually thinking about switching these fitness classes into a channel, a separate channel again. So now I would be ending up with three channels. One would be Headshots for Head Cancer, which is for all the gaming, if uh, if that's why you are briefly watching this, it's because you're wondering, hey, I think this guy used to drink pints and sit down and listen to music and shit like that. But yeah, Headshots for Head Cancer, if you want that. And I, I'm pretty sure I am going to move these fitness classes into its own channel because it's very specific what we're doing here and i don't think anyone is going to be interested unless they are interested in uh, actually doing the fitness class as well so i want to try and separate them because uh, for anyone who was nice enough to uh, subscribe thanks first of all thanks a lot uh, it gets me up in the morning but also uh, i don't want to be throwing i don't want to be throwing too much shit at you i am i throw shit on my channel that's what it is basically but um the less, the better, I guess. Now, yeah. uh, we are going to be doing a body weight circuit class. Uh, I'm pretty sure there is a video of this uh, online from ages ago. We're going to go through one of my favorite fitness um, routines. I've been doing it for years. I pepper it into loads of different... Um, uh, classes in all sorts of ways, and I just call it the super burp because what it is is you go down one, two, three, four, five mountain climbers, one press up, continue to press up, knees come in, little jump in the air, and um, you can do a tuck jump if you want, if you want to do it harder. Although this was how I hurt my knee. I will not, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. That's how I ended up hurting my knee. I think I was pushing myself too far and uh, I wasn't landing in proper in a safe way. So uh, I don't do that anymore. So a little jump in the air and then one, I'll do this to the side. Two, all right. One, two, three, four, five star jumps. Okay. So that's what we're going to end up doing. Yeah, do you like that? Uh, but we will do a warm up with a sort of a, a sort of a stretch routine to it as well. So because for some of you it might be early in the day, I don't know what your day routine is like with COVID, but we're gonna do uh, something that I think of as the um, the the clock or the compass. So we go nine o'clock. 12, 3, 6, west, north, east, south. And what you're doing is nice wide base, and you're just tapping all around different points sort of in your body. Okay, change the direction, so now you're going anti-clockwise, north, west, south, east, front, left, back, right. Okay, and now we are going to get into the inchworm. So, you start at the back, you can start down, uh, you can start on your feet and work your way back doesn't really matter, but you are going to push yourselves back, try to keep the palms and your hands on the floor, try and keep your heels as close to the ground as much as possible, bend in the knees, um, a slight bend in the knees is fine, it's almost uh, expected, if you're very flexible, then don't, and then straighten the knees out, come up, round out the arms, down, 
Start with the fingertips, try to get the palms to the earth as soon as possible. Walk, 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 walk. And then once you're here, try and put your elbows, or not your elbows, sorry, your armpits to the ground and stretch with your arse in the air. Okay, slowly bring your body up. Nice big. Rolling in the shoulders. Through that twice. And fingertips. Walk, 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 walk. Try and keep the heels to the floor the whole time. And elbows. Try and get the elbow. Oh, sorry, again. Armpits. Try and get the armpits to. You're actually trying to get the armpits to your dick. <laughs> To your dick or to your fanny, that's what you're really trying to do. You're trying to get that specific angle. I could have said belly button, but I'm a dirtbag. <coughs> and a child. And a big child. And so I'll always go with the naughty words first. Go. Get out of my path. Now, uh, we're doing a similar exercise, and we're moving on to what is known as the dive bomber press-up. It is yoga. <coughs> it is a yoga pose that's been alternated to... Uh, uh, it's been alternated to be a bit more about strength, so we're in this pose again. Oh, God, don't make me throw you away somewhere else because I will, and then you'll whine. And while you're amusing, sitting around in the camera, you're the polar opposite when you're outside because you start crying. That's why she's involved in these, it's not to sort of add clicks, it's to. Defend off people going, I'm not listening to that dog scream anymore. So we swoop down and then come back up, bring our ass into the air. And this is um, the Spetsnaz do this, the Russian special forces, probably because they are closer to India and they might have some um, influence from the yo yoga routines out there. Or they might just be doing their own thing. So trying to glide your face and your chest nice and close to the earth. Raise your arms back up, pointing straight up. So similar to, um, I really should learn the names while I'm doing this. I'm kind of ad living them a little bit, but you're doing an alteration of what I believe is cobra pose. And then going into downward facing dog. This might be up dog as well though. All right. So going to child's pose. This one definitely is the accurate term. And we'll go up. Dive bomber press up. And walk back, doing the inchworm. Okay. And now we are going to get in, now that we're warmed up and loosened up a fair bit, we are going to get into the super burpee. A bit of water is good for this. And the way this works is I go uh, 45 seconds on, 15 seconds off. 15 seconds, you can do one of the full sets. I believe that's part-time. I've done loads of fitness classes where there have been people who have uh, more numbers, <coughs> higher numbers when you ask them their age on a piece of paper, and uh, they don't have a high level of fitness, and they're able to keep up with this par, or they're, uh, or they're quickly able to uh, get to this level. So don't be a pussy. Try and do three um, of these uh, circles, these um, sets. Try and aim for three over the 45 second mark. If you can't do it, don't be upset with yourself. Just make sure that you do it again within a couple of days and you'll be shocked how quickly you'll be able to get your fitness very sky high. <clears throat> and if you do feel bad, good, use it. Use that sort of gap, guilt, that upset and be like, I don't want to be like this ever again. 
and then come back and do um, do this exact same exercise again, and you get better at it fast. Same goes for anyone who used to be a lot fitter, and they're like, oh, fuck, COVID's been cruel to me. You will actually bounce back far quicker than someone will get fit. Getting um, the rebound effect, the muscle memory is, is huge. But anyway, I'm done talking shite. And what we're going to do is we're just going to do eight minutes of this. So we are going to uh, 45 seconds of the work, 15 seconds off the work, where you get a, a very small break. And that will add up to eight minutes, which is also a big reason why I've always liked this one. You can literally do the timing of it uh, to a T. So if you want some of the last 15 minutes, you can do that. Okay, so we're going to start based off of the clock. I have here, three, two, one. So one, two, three, four, five. Press up. Jump your feet in. Little jump in the air. And then one, two, three, four, five. And that's 15 seconds. Down. One, two, three, four, five. Press up. Keep the feet in. Jump in the air. One, two, three, four, five. 30 seconds. Down. One, two, three, four, five. Press up. Shoot the feet in. Little jump in the air. One, two, three, four, five. And break. So sometimes I do finish off the set, but you should break as soon as I say break. Because 15 seconds goes very quickly. There we go. One, two, four, five. Press up. Two, three, four. Down to the floor. One, two, three, four, five. Press up. Feet in, little jump in the air. One, two, three, four, five. Down. One, two, three, four, five. Jump in the air. One, two, three, four, five. Time. So already, we're 25% complete. I'm a big believer in um, whenever you're doing something that's endurance related, that whatever you're thinking is halfway, is not halfway. 80% of the way through is halfway. So I always think of it as effort rather than actual time. Okay, off we go. Took way too much time there. Five, one. One, two, three, four. Five, down, one, two, three, four, five, press up, jump, one, two, three, five, down, one, two, three, four, five, press, one, one, two, three, five, and time. So you have to do it that fast, that was just me not telling you the right time to chime in. It's probably better if you keep your own clock. And go. One, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Four, five, <clears throat> 15 seconds to go. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Time. Halfway done. In terms of time, effort, give it two more. Three, two, one, go. One, 
two, three, four, five. Press up. Keep the feet in. Let's jump in here. Two, three, four, five. Back down. One, two, three, four, five. Press up. Keep the feet in. Let's jump in here. One, two, three, four, five. 15 seconds remaining. One, two, three, five. Shoot the feet in. Jump in the air. One, two, three, four, five. Time. Now, a little minor. Uh, can you see me? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can drop to your knees while you do the press ups if you want. Nothing against that. Just make sure the chest goes to the ground. And these shoes are getting off you go, start. Don't look at me. Shoes are getting bent. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, two, three, four, five. Can't do the jump there, my mistake. One, two. Three, four, five. Ah. One, two, three, four, five. And time. I think we're at six now. Three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, five. Press up, chest to the ground as much as possible. Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One more. One, two, three, four, five. Press up. Shoot the feet in, jump in the air. One, two, three, four, five. Keep going, keep going. Time. Last one now. Seeing as this is the last one, try and up your pace. Go on. The beating you'll get later. The beating. All right. Last one. Go. One, two. Three, four, five, press up. Shoot the feet in, jump in the air. One, two, three, four, five. Get back down. One, two, three, four, five, press up. Shoot the feet in. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. Down. One, two, three, four, five, press up. Shoot the feet in, jump. One, two, three, four. Five, down, one, two, three, four, five, press up, one, one, two, three, four, five, time. Whew. I love that routine. Now, <clears throat> yes, now, now you can come in. Now you can come in and be a bit annoyed. Yeah, it's not so hot, so we'll take you out for a run today. You don't just have to go for one of your smelly walks. <clears throat> so get your breath back. <clears throat> If you've done what I've done with the mat, bring it back to normal. If anyone is wondering, the reason that I did that is because uh, when I do that on the mat, this isn't uh, particularly strong. It's made of simple plastic. And uh, it breaks it up. Where did I put my bottle of water? You steered it, did you?
So, something that we're gonna finish out with is um, some sort of long pauses with stretching, something that you could do while meditating. Well, maybe not while meditating, but relaxing with your head. So, you um, the stretch that we're doing here, we're not trying to really push it too hard. We wanna be able to sit comfortably. Stop, will you? I hate when she does that. She follows whatever's in my hand around. Hey, that's not nice, is it? Okay, she's gonna win on this. Time, no more boxing. Time for jujitsu. Oh God! <laughs> stop! 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 Cool it down. Calm down. Thank you, Cam. Cam? No, no biting. No biting. Kinky. Shh. Stop now, okay? Okay. No. Nope. Okay, so what we're going to yeah, what we're going to do is get into something called a butterfly pose. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. The palms of the feet touch together. Um you can pry them together using your arm. No, can you stop? Stop! 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 Angry voice! Angry while I'm not actually angry voice. Angry voice. <clears throat> so pinch your feet together and you can push with your elbows down on your knees to split. Now, the way I end up holding this pose for a long period of time is I get something to support my back. So I can lean back into it. And then I get, these weights are probably too heavy, a little bit. So I'll be needing to use my uh, arms a lot more to concentrate but not huge amount. So if you can see, most of the weight can be put uh, on the legs. Now I do have, <sighs> all right, well she at least is a good example of how your legs can take a lot of extra weight. She didn't split my legs open or anything like that. Oh, now she's gone inside. She's getting too annoying. In, inside, in, one. <laughs> trying to talk about relaxation <laughs> so you can put any sort of weight on your knee that is a you know like a milk milk cartons fill them up with water i would advise get empty ones and fill them up with water because you get milk all over yourself huge deal to spill milk and cry about it. It's a very natural thing to cry about spilt milk. And from here, you want to be using your breathing technique. If you haven't seen any of the previous class where I've mentioned this, it's not some hippy dippy nonsense. It's simply when you exhale, you breathe out, your muscular tissue relaxes. When it relaxes, you can go deeper into a stretch and then it's almost like you're distracting it. It's like you're clicking your fingers to one side of the dog's ear. The dog looks over and it hasn't noticed what's on the left side or the right side. I can't remember which one I started with. Your muscles work the same way. They will tense up while you're trying to stretch them because they're trying to protect the muscle. They don't want it to go, let's say 100% snaps the muscle. They stop at about 50% because they're like, whoa, 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 we've got to slow this down. We're safe at 70, but let's stop here. It's not a, uh, what's the speeding phrase? It's a limit, not a target. Yeah, your muscles act like that. Then when you breathe out, the muscle is distracted, looks to the side, and you can, you know, move the car up another 10 meters. And it, when it turns around, it's like, okay, okay, okay. 60%, that's not too bad. It's fine. <clears throat> you can tolerate this. 
death by a thousand cuts. They keep letting it go. You do this for another 30 seconds. Something that I quite like with these, um, these stretches is um, you can hold them for a while. Make sure you're careful when you come back out of them because your hips can feel a little knocked out of place. But you can sit down and you can watch Teddy for this. I wouldn't advise it when you're watching a new film that you want to see, but you know, if you're just watching something on YouTube that is uh, you know, sort of mildly educational, just telling you something about an interesting theory or oh did you know this is how you know the financial system in Korea works you know just something like that where you kind of wasted a bit of time but you think you're being productive sort of thing how do eggs change color when they're heated up okay take them off and something that I always do is I actually physically help my legs come back up and just give them time to normalize. <clears throat> yeah, but while you're watching, you know, your egg video, your Korean financial egg video, sit down in one of these poses. I'm actually, the one that I'm going to do next is another really good one if you're at a desk because you can use your desk as a prop. So this one, um, I don't know if I came up with it or if it's just known as threading the needle. So if you can imagine, you're sitting down, desk is here, using the desk to prop down your knee is, um, is a really good way to do this exercise. Now I have particularly tight hips, so I'm not gonna be as flexible as a lot of people. So push yourself with this one. So I'll just direct that again. Uh, your knee that you're using as a sort of focal point, I think is the correct term here, fulcrum, is nice and solid, right angle, okay? Let's say it's right foot, left foot comes up, placement onto the knee, push down with your free hand. You can use your desk to do this as well. If you're on your back, the threading the needle thing comes from both hands, in between the uh, right leg and then they go underneath the leg or in front of the knee entirely on your own preference another great way that i do this is whenever i'm making my coffee or maybe heating my coffee back up is um i do it on a kitchen counter i put down a uh a kitchen dryer towel just put it on top of the counter put my ankle on top of the counter and then while standing up, I feel like that's the best way to really get into the stretch. And again, hopefully you'll hear me say this over and over again because it's a really, it's an amazing method and so easy. It's called grease the groove. Grease the groove is particularly good for stretching. So if you have tight hips like we all do from sitting on our asses too much, every time you make your coffee, your tea, the little sort of things that you do on the counter where it's like you're taking a break, coffee and TV and the main ones and maybe you just get a drink of water. Now is a good time to just put your foot up on the counter, put two fingers up to your mom and say, fuck you, mom. I'll put my feet wherever I want. And um, just stretch each foot, each leg for you know 15 seconds. It adds up hugely. Okay, and we're gonna finish on the other one here. So same, uh, left foot to the floor, and my right foot was much tighter, so that's why I led with the left foot. Right comes in. Oh, you can see that one. So get it nice and square, as comfortable as possible. This is another one that you can do while you're sitting. And um, unfortunately, you have to be flexible enough to do it. But if you get flexible enough that you can do it without your hands um, pushing something down, 
you can do it while you just sit there and play computer games and watch telly um, continually. What? That is a nasty, nasty hair. So in an annoying way, because my left leg is more flexible than my right one, it's actually easier to, to stretch because this one is sort of, it can be put into a comfortable position where it's easier to stretch out, whereas my left one is. I can get into certain poses, like while I'm on the kitchen, where I can actually lean down and I can sort of relax while I'm doing something. But this one is too tight for me to, you know, actually make my cup of tea, actually, you know, set the right timer on the microwave. I've got to completely focus on it, otherwise uh, it's just not doing the stretch. And same with watching the telly or can't play a video game on it because I need both hands to do this one. And we're gonna go 10 more seconds here. Remember to use your breath, it really helps. And your knee, your knee shouldn't be sore while you do this. You should feel it in your hip more. If you're feeling it in your knee, try a different angle. Okay. And that's the class. <clears throat> so I haven't um, I haven't actually uh, gotten that third channel that I was going to have for these fitness classes. But um, if you watch these fitness classes and you don't want them onto a third channel, uh, be like, oh, you'll lose subscribers, blah, blah, blah. This is, this is a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever your opinion may be, please leave a comment. Let me know. Let me know how you feel about that sort of thing. Um, the whole thing that I really look forward to is when this channel is big enough that it is a, it's, a, it's a community. So, like, there's feedback. There's uh, some people say they're problems. Other people agree with them. Some people say they like X. Some people they say they hate Y. Um, y! <laughs> and... Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully it does happen soon enough. The channel is slowly growing. But, yeah, let me know if you would prefer a – actually, particularly, let me know what title you think because each channel gets its own thing. This is just Liam TW, or I think it might be actually technically Ian Jupp, which was just the first thing I did when I was doing, signing up to YouTube, you know, 10 years ago or whatever it was. And then the gaming one is Headshots for Head Cancer. So – if you do want that, go over to that channel and subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's the that's the class. Hopefully, this hasn't cocked up again. Nuisance dog. That's what you are. Hmm. Just as well I didn't say a lot of torrent of racial slurs.